Well, happy Easter. happy Easter! We can do a little better than that. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Thank you. A special welcome to our online worshiping community and happy Easter to you as well. If you would turn with me to the back of your bulletin, I have a few announcements I'd like to make before our Easter worship begins. First of all, the vestry has prepared a festive coffee hour, which is in the Narthek, or in the um, parish hall, in the building next to the church here, where we gather for fellowship following the service. If you would like to be a part of that ministry, there are opportunities to sign up for future coffee hours. The Lenten series that we had here at St. Columbus that Paul Ament led was so popular and successful that they are continuing after Easter. And Paul, I'm sure people can join you if they... So, there's information about the continuing series. Um, also, an invitation to participate in our project food program and the types of food in particular that we need to serve to our community. A special welcome to our choir and musicians this Easter. And turn with me to the back of your bulletin. You'll see the names of those who have made wonderful contributions to make this church look so beautiful on Easter Sunday. But also a special thank you to everyone who worked so hard cleaning and decorating to make this church look so welcoming this glorious Easter morning. Please join with me now in standing as we sing our opening hymn, Come Ye Faithful, Raise the Strain. My sisters and brothers, Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia!
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson is from Acts. Peter speaks to the assembled Gentile crowd, giving testimony of Jesus' passion and resurrection, connecting these events with God's story of redemption throughout history. Listen now for the word of God. Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Let us say, say together Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, 14 to 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die and live and declare the works of the Lord. 
Our second lesson is from Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples, Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Gracious and loving God, on this Easter morning we give thanks that the tomb of death is defeated. We give thanks that God is pulling Jesus and all humanity out of death and darkness and into your marvelous and glorious light. Amen. Please be seated. Two weeks ago, I was reading Matthew's story of the Passion in preparation for Palm Sunday. And I was reading about, in the Passion, the events that lead up to Jesus' execution. And while I've read this story many times, a few verses leapt out at me. 
verses that I had never quite noticed before. What was especially intriguing to me were these few verses that provide details at the time of Jesus' death that are unique to Matthew and not in any of the other Gospels. And last Sunday I said we would come back to these verses today. Here is what grabbed my attention. Then Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. And here's the part that is unique to Matthew. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Nowhere in all of scripture is there an account of the dead being raised and walking around Jerusalem, either at the time of Christ's execution or the day of his resurrection. As I pondered this image of tombs being opened and the dead raised, I recalled a wonderful book by John Dominic Crossan, Resurrecting Easter, how the West lost and the Easter kept, and the East kept the original vision of Easter. Crossan spent over 10 years visiting libraries, museums, monasteries, churches from England to Russia to study the Eastern Orthodox vision of Easter as represented in their iconography. Most of us are products of Western European Christianity. In our images of Easter, we often see an empty tomb, angels by the tomb, grave clothes left behind in the tomb, women coming to prepare Jesus' body for proper burial, and the resurrection appearances first to the women and then to the men. But for the Eastern Orthodox, Easter and resurrection is a very different image. I'd like you to look with me at the cover of our bulletin this morning. This is an image of how the Eastern Orthodox Church sees Easter and resurrection. This is an Eastern Orthodox icon of resurrection. There are many interesting aspects to this icon. First of all, in this image, you see the white-robed Christ standing in the middle. With each hand, Christ is pulling Adam and Eve out of their coffins. Adam is to the left and Eve is to the right. Behind Adam are the Old Testament saints, first David and Solomon, and next to them John the Baptist, and behind them the prophets and other. Behind Eve are the disciples, Mary, Mary Magdalene, and the other women. Around and behind Jesus is that circular image of grays and gold. For the Orthodox, this is the mandorla which represents the eternal energy and light of God's resurrection love. This is the part that fascinates me the most. Jesus is pulling Adam and Eve by their wrists out of their coffins into Jesus' mandorla into the energy and light of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is pulling Adam and Eve into his resurrection. For the Orthodox, this image of Jesus pulling an Adam and Eve into Jesus' resurrection 
is a metaphor for all of humanity. As symbols of our progenitors, all of humanity is being pulled into Christ's resurrection. In Orthodox icons, Jesus' resurrection is not a singular event about himself alone. Jesus' resurrection is about all of humanity, not only in the future, but now. Not only in the past, but now. In Jesus' reaching to Adam and Eve, Jesus is reaching to all of humanity, past, present, and future. For each of us, this is our destiny. This is our now, and this is our future, the invitation of God calling each of us to be pulled into Jesus' mandorla. I have never thought about resurrection this way before. All of the past, all of the present, and all of the future are being pulled into the eternal and unfolding mystery and power of the resurrection of new life. Because resurrection is an ongoing and dynamic reality, if this image were more contemporary, we would see a vast army of nameless faces of our untold sisters and brothers throughout the millennia. We would also see some of the heroes of our faith. We would see Columba, we would see Francis and Claire, we would see Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Martin Luther King, and we would surely see Desmond Tutu. We might also see some of our own local congregation. We would see some of our own heroes of the faith here. Al Smith, Cliff, Bev, and others of your St. Columbus family. We would also see our own beloved family members and friends in this contemporary icon. Easter is not only about the past dead having new life. This image of resurrection reaches right into our world and lives today and wants to unwrap the grave clothes that we wrap around ourselves. The resurrected Christ is inviting us to leave our tombs of fear and greed to live more abundantly and fully in the land of God's resurrection, love, and justice. It is this new life, this resurrection life, this Easter life, the power of hope that God desires for each of us today and always. But we see more than the past and ourselves in this picture of resurrection. Perhaps we came here this morning caring very deeply about someone very near to us in great need. Perhaps we yearn for some Easter hope for them or for ourselves. Can we imagine that every burden we carry here today, every care for another, every hope, and hope for the broken, fearful, and violent world around us is being pulled into Christ's mandorla. I pray that you will feel the power of God's love pulling you into Jesus' mandorla of resurrection. Will you reach out and receive Jesus' hand of resurrection fellowship? But Easter and resurrection are more than our personal hopes and desires. Crosan in his book concludes with these challenging words about how we are all called to share with God in building a resurrection world. Crosan writes, when Christ raised, rising from the dead after being executed for nonviolent resistance against violent imperial injustice, 
grasps the hands of Adam and Eve, he creates a parable for all of humanity's redemption. Even though Christ is crucified for his nonviolent resistance, this crucifixion and resurrection imagery challenges our species to redeem our world and save our earth by transcending the escalatory violence we create as civilization's normal trajectory. This icon of resurrection makes clear we are all involved in this process of resurrection. Easter and resurrection is also about how God wants to save our world from fear and violence. This vision of Easter and resurrection changes how we see and live in the world. Easter means that we are all in this together. What is revealed to us this Easter is that God's deepest desire is for love and justice for the whole human family. This is why our Easter faith demands that we are committed to building this dream with God for all of our sisters and brothers, especially those who are most at risk. Easter leaves no one behind. Amen. As you are able, please join me in standing for our affirmation of faith. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of the one God, maker and sustainer of earth, sea, and sky, born of Mary's womb, faithful to the God of Abraham and Sarah, Jesus healed the sick, served the poor, and proclaimed heaven on earth. Condemned by the religious, crucified by the state, he died but transformed even death and rose to life everlasting. He blessed the disciples with his Holy Spirit and sent them forth, east and west, north and south. We commit ourselves to Jesus, to one another as sisters and brothers, and to his mission in the world, in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ has burst through the tomb of death, victorious over its power, revealing the triumph of light over every darkness. In thanksgiving, we offer our prayers, responding, hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the resurrection of Jesus, who empties our spiritual tombs and reveals the way to abundant life, let us pray, hear us, O Christ. For the leaders of the nations, especially Joseph, our president, that they may guide the world to a greater fulfillment of its quest for freedom, justice, and peace, let us pray. Hear us, O For the innocent in troubled places and wherever strife stifles harmony, that the actions of the global community may free all who are suffering or imprisoned unjustly, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. 
for the church, for the bishops throughout our Anglican communion, and especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and John, bishop of our diocese, and for each of us that we may embrace the mystery of the Pascha and give witness to the living Christ in our midst. Let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for the faithful, lead, the faithful departed, those who have left us an inheritance of God's blessings and who now join in the chorus of angels and the saints in paradise, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. In thanksgiving for all who have gathered here today to share in this Holy Eucharist, that we may each be changed by the message of new life and the food of eternal hope, growing richly and fully into the forgiving compassion of Jesus, let us pray. Hear us, O risen Christ. Christ, morning star, shine in us and through us as we pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the church, for St. Columbus, the Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, our Project Hope Food Ministries, and our clergy, staff, vestry, and rector search committee. We pray for those with immediate needs, for Brianna, Father Tom, Nenny, Andrew, Hank, Megan, Sarah, Brad, Meg, Allison, John, Jill, Norma, Billy, Christy, Sally, Therese, Jim, Mona, Luis, Jameson, Dick, Bruce, Morgan, Karina, John, Chris, James, Emily, Michael, Patricia, Timothy, Jillian, Dory, Candace, Melissa, Maggie, Robbie, Dick, and Skylar. And we pray for those who need our continuing prayers as listed in the bulletin. We pray for the world, for peace in the Middle East, in all troubled areas of the world, especially Ukraine and Russia. And for all those serving at home and abroad, for Jesse, Liam, Simon, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, Noah, De London, and Marty. Please offer your praises and your prayers at this time. Our 15 year old granddaughter. Celebration. Lord, you give us life. You give us love. You give us yourself. Help us to give our lives and our love, ourselves, to you. Through Jesus, who died and rose again for us and who lives with you and the Holy Spirit in everlasting light. Amen. And now please join me in the welcoming prayer. Holy Spirit, living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Columbus. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the warmth of your love. Help us to perceive needs and give us wisdom to respond, knowing each person crossing our threshold is sent by you to enrich our lives. Most of all, O oh God, let this be a place where all your children are embraced and accepted in the name of the child you bent to be our Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate? Ah. She has a long walk. I'll walk to her. I'm going to take a great jump of faith and say it's a birthday? It is. Good. It's Friday. Otherwise, Maurice would be with you. That's right. Good. So let us pray together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Good. And now, my sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also I would invite you to find your seats now. Just a few special announcements before we move into the heart of our worship, the Eucharist. First of all, we want you to know that if you are visiting with us, we have a time of fellowship following the service, the coffee hour, which is in the building, the uh, parish hall adjacent to the church here. If you'd like to know more about us as a community of faith, we invite you to fill the guest book, which is in the narthex just outside of this room. But most especially on this Easter Sunday, we want you to know that wherever you are in your faith, that you are welcome to God's table. This is not our table. This is God's table, and all are welcome. And there are simple instructions about how we are all invited to come forward and the ushers will release you when it comes to that time. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us, an offering of generosity and love.
man is right. Please join me in standing for prayer, the great thanksgiving as you are able. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks and praise fill our hearts, O God, for you are the Lord of creation and new creation, of covenant and new covenant. You brought your people out of slavery to freedom in the promised land, and you brought your son from the depth of death to the glory of resurrection life. And so we gladly thank you with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, singing this hymn of your unending praise. Joy and gladness are our song, redeeming God. For in your conquest of death, we see the destiny of every hope in you. Come among us in the power of your Holy Spirit, that your children may be blessed with power and grace, and that this bread and cup may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to him, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hope and glory are our breath, merciful God, for you have rolled away the stone of despair, the stone of oppression, the stone of lament, the stone of grief, the stone of death, the stone of sin, the stone of fear. Come and stand among us and breathe on us your eternal life that all who labor, all who stumble, all who hunger, and all who fall shall meet you in the breaking of the bread and be lifted up by your touch. Shape your church to be your risen body. Make our scars beautiful like your scars. Make our life giving like your life. And make our communion holy with your saints until you come again in glory and we eat with you in your kingdom. Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, ever one God. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. As we distribute Holy Communion here to the congregation, we invite those on the live stream to offer the prayer of spiritual communion.
As you are able, please join me in standing for our prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the blessing of Easter Resurrection be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. It's a nice problem to have.